guys. Uh, introductory video for Math 1170. This is spring 2017. Teaching two sections. Uh, I'll teach them exactly uh, the same, identically. Um, so um, anyway, sections 90 and 91. I just want to go over some things with you. Um, you know, I, I've been teaching in Shawnee for a long time, and I hear a lot of students say, well, you, there's no need to go to class the first day because all your professor will do is go over the syllabus. Um, I think that's pretty goofy to take that approach. I think it's one of the most important days because you need to decide the first day whether you're going to stick with the professor, and you certainly need to understand his or her her um, uh, class policies. Uh, I think it's critical. It's even more important in an online course. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through the class syllabus with uh, kind of a fine-tooth comb and tell you the things that you need to consider uh, when making the decision whether or not to stay in the class. And that's kind of what, what the purpose of this is, to let you know how things are going to be handled uh, and see if this is something that, that, that you can manage. Uh, it will not be the course content that gets you if you're not successful in this class. It will be your lack of, uh, uh, of, of discipline and uh, uh, time management and, and things like that. Online courses take... Uh, uh, take, take uh, I think, uh, a lot more management and a lot more time uh, discipline uh, than a face-to-face -face class. So if you're one of those people, I guess in a nutshell, just, just cutting through all the this, this smoke here in the layers of, uh, of um, well, the layers of stuff. Uh, if, if you're someone who needs external motivation uh, to... to to go to class and succeed, then, you know, the online class probably isn't for you. Uh, so, um, you know, we teach this on campus, face-to-face. -face. We we're not teaching it face-to-face -face this semester, but uh, we do teach it face-to-face -face, uh, other times. So, so guys, just, just think about it as we go through this. Uh, guys, my name is Doug Darbro. Um, I, I really don't, not one of those professors that gets hung up on the doctor or whatever. Uh, if you call me Dr. Darbro, uh, I'll respond. Uh, Doug is fine. Uh, some people call me Triple D, Dr. Doug Darbro. Uh, been called that before. Uh, I don't like being called Mr. Darbro. So, um, but anything else, I, you know, whatever. Um, office hours, uh, you see those on, on campus Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. Uh, I think these um, this this time slot right here is super important. Uh, Tuesday from noon to two. Uh, because your assignments will be due every Tuesday at 11 p.m. So, uh, you know, if you, you're, uh, and I'll go over that a, a lot more here in just a second, but, uh, you know, if you need help on something, uh, come see me. Uh, noon to 2, I'll be in my office. Uh, Wednesdays is pretty important, too. Let's say you work on your um, uh, assignment on Tuesday nights, and there's a couple problems, or one, or two, or ten, or whatever that you just don't understand, come and see me on Wednesday, and we'll get it, uh, get it worked out, Okay. Uh, office phone provided, email provided. Guys, I will tell you one thing about email. It is critical that you check your email uh, regularly, uh, I think daily. So if you don't check your mymail at shunny.edu, uh, I don't think I said that right. It's your name at mymail.shunny.edu. Uh, if you don't check that regularly and maybe you check a Gmail or a Yahoo, uh, send me an email uh, at ddarbro at shiny.edu and give me the email that you check most regularly. Uh, my office, I'll tell you right now, my office is hard to find. Uh, whenever students uh, request to come to my office hours or meet me, they're like, oh, I, it, inevitably, Dr. Darbro, I'm, I'm wandering around campus trying to find your, uh, your office and I can't find it. So what I've done, I've included a map. Now, the easiest, and the star right here is where my office is sorta. Of. Now the easiest way to get there, there's a door. This this part over here is called Massey Hall. This part over here is called the administration building. There's a door right here that you probably have never uh, uh, seen that you can go through and when you go through that door right across the hall is a door that goes into the math department offices. Come in to, to, to the math department uh, offices. I'm the first door on the left in terms of offices. Uh, the copier and stuff is actually the, technically the first door, so I guess I'm technically the second door. Um, another way, just come in the door, the right door uh, of Massey Hall, 
go down the hallway, and when you look to your right and see this door that you probably never noticed before, look to your left, and that's where you find me. Um, catalog description, general education uh, requirements. I, I'm not going to go over that. This just is a formal presentation of uh, you know what you're going to learn in this class. Uh, the general education requirement, as you know, your degree is kind of divided into two components. Uh, one is your major minor uh, emphasis of study, and the other is uh, the general education program requirements. Well, the good news is when you successfully complete this class, uh, you will fulfill the quantitative reasoning component of the GEP. Um, ADA statement, this is not as critical, um, well, it is critical too, but in a face-to-face -face class, um, it, um, well, it may be more so, but I don't know. Uh, guys, it doesn't matter. If there's any uh, accommodation that you are entitled to, by law, through ADA, uh, let me know, and guys, I'll do everything in my power to make sure that those accommodations or that accommodation is provided to you. Uh, probably for an on online class, um, uh, you know, you have ample time to do the, the work, so I don't think that's, that's an issue, and I'll explain that in just a second. I think you'll agree with me on that. But uh, if there's some sort of testing issue, testing, uh, a, a, a quiet testing environment, uh, extended time, then let me know, we'll, 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 we'll make that happen. Uh, computer access, uh, this is, to me, this is kind of a duh, uh, excuse me for being so blunt, but this is an online class, so uh, you clearly need to have regular access to a computer and reliable internet service. Uh, technology, guys, you're going to need a Texas Instrument TI-83 or 84 calculator. Uh, will other things work? No, they really don't. Uh, I... I'm going to show you some really, really, really cool options on your calculator, and we're going to use those to work some pretty sophisticated types of problems. Um, the Texas Instrument Calculator has a, a function called TVM Solver that's really nice for the, uh, and it's critical, for the, uh, <coughs> uh, the math of finance part. Okay, the most source of confusion for students tends to be the textbook. The textbook, the physical textbook that you carry around with you is not required. However, the ebook is required through my math lab. So, uh, the textbook that I use, I'm going to highlight it right here, is Finite Mathematics for Business, Economics, Life Sciences, and Social Sciences. Uh, you go to mymathlab.com, and the first thing it will ask is, what is your course ID? Well, your course ID is Darbro 10 uh, 18 7 without the period, and um, and that'll get the, the whole thing started. Now, I'm going to put up uh, I'll put up a video actually for my stats class. That I'm going to share with you, uh, and I want you to watch that if there's uh, any question at all on uh, on uh, signing. Uh, signing up for my math lab. Guys, there's two options. I just about forgot. There's two options for getting this. You can go to Shawnee State uh, uh, Bookstore. I think the cost over there is about $125. Uh, you can go directly to my math lab and purchase it. And um, I think the cost there is about 105 maybe 100 So I think you save about $25 if you purchase it directly uh, from the math lab. Now, uh, let's say funds are tight and you don't have the money to purchase it right now. Uh, you can get a two-week uh, uh, trial course access option. Uh, I put up a video, and it'll be accessible in that folder, uh, Getting Started. Uh, and I'll point that out uh, here in just a second. Um, but, um, um, but, but anyway, you... Uh, you, you have to have my math lab. I mean, we, we're, you know, I'm teaching an online course here. Uh, we must have an online uh, course management system uh, so we can communicate. All right, tutors. Uh, there's going to be some, some pretty cool tutor options. Uh, Finite math is actually kind of fun. Uh, we, use, we, we actually uh, approach some, some, some kind of real-life problems that all of you are going to encounter one day. I'll give you an example of a type of problem that we're going to look at is, you know, you, you buy a house for 200000 you you 
uh, more uh, uh, finance it over maybe 30 years with monthly payments, whatever it may be, interest rate you know, 4%. Um, does it really save you much money if you add $100 to your payment each month? Well, guys, we're going to get that down to the penny, exactly to the penny, how much you save by adding uh, 50, 100, 70, whatever it may be to your payment. It actually turns out you, uh, you save quite a bit on your money by doing that. Um, but uh, anyway, it, from time to time, it can be challenging, uh, and uh, there's, uh, there's going to be options. I'm going to talk more about this. You're going to have what's called a supplemental instructor for this class who's going to meet on Tuesdays. I think on Tuesdays he's going to meet from maybe 2 to 6. Uh, again, don't hold me to that because there's going to be more information provided about that uh, within the next couple of days. But, uh, and I've got to meet with him uh, he hadn't been back on campus because of the break, so I, I have to meet with him to come up with a schedule. Uh, but I'll let you know uh, how uh, to, to handle that or when it will, will be offered. So, you know, right now, if, if, if you start struggling, uh, you know, please don't fall behind. Uh, you can go to the, to the math lab. And by the way, guys, the math lab, if you are uh, come out from the math department, if you'll walk down the hallway... It's kind of from the where you're leaving Massey Hall and you go into the administration building, the first hallway to your left, and then the first door to your right. That's a math lab. That's where math geeks hang out and, and help people who are struggling with their classes. And they do other things, but that's most applicable to you. Guys, there's two on, on, uh, on campus sessions that are mandatory. Um, when, when we got this course, well, when I got this course approved as an online course, the distance learning committee uh, felt it was very important for the integrity of our course that we have face-to-face -face sessions when we do testing. So uh, long story short, you have to come to campus to be tested. Uh, the, uh, the dates are Wednesday, March 1st. That's the week before spring break. And Wednesday, May 3rd, that's the week of finals. So um, it's, uh, the time window is 4 to 7 p.m. Uh, it's not going to take you three hours. It'll probably take you somewhere between 45 minutes and an hour uh, to take each of your exams, maybe a little longer uh, on the final. And I'll probably extend that from 4 to 8 on the final. But anyway, um, you drop in. Uh, you can start anytime uh, at 4 and after, but you must be finished uh, by 7 p.m. Uh, the computer will shut down at 7. The, the program will shut down at 7, so you've got to be done. So, uh, you know, I had a student uh, two years ago that uh, he kind of liked to uh, <laughs> approach things at his, at his own pace, and he, uh, for some reason, he just liked to come in about 6.45 and start his exam, and uh, I, I kind of called him out on it, and I said, well, do you have a class before? No, I just, you know, I think I can do it in 15 minutes. Well, uh, it, it didn't work well. He took uh, finite math three times before he finally realized that, well, maybe I need to allow a little bit more time to, to take the final exam. He really did. He, he failed it twice and uh, barely got through the third time. But he was one of those guys that just, you know, he wouldn't watch the videos. And I'll tell you about those in just a second. He just wanted to do things at his own, uh, on his own pace. And, uh, and, you know, maybe that'll work well for him someday. Uh, but for an online math class, it, you know, it just doesn't seem to work well. All right, guys, uh, requirements to be successful in the class. And I'm not even sure it's to be successful, I should say, to survive this class. Uh, you need to watch two to three hours of videos per week, uh, and you're expected to submit your assignments on time. Now, I'm going to show you here in just a second. I'll show you how this will all unfold. I'll access um, uh, videos from, from my class that I taught this very class I taught online last semester, and I'll show you how all that happens on Blackboard. Uh, guys, you got to check your email regularly, um, daily, and you have to attend both on-campus sessions. Okay. Now let's talk about um, uh, accessing the videos. Okay. So I'm going to go to Blackboard, and I'm going to bring up now your all's class. Um, is these two spring uh, 1170, but I want to go to the one that I just taught and show you how this uh, actually happens. What it's going to look like in the finished product. So 
Uh, guys, what you'll do is you'll go to the content uh, option over to the left. And when you go to the contents section, you're going to see the videos and the resources for every week. Now, you're, you're not going to, all the weeks won't be posted. Uh, I'll uh, post week number one on the Monday of week number one. I'll post folder number two on week number two, that Monday. So what's going to happen is, for example, last semester, my students were in the first week. The Monday was August the 22nd. The next Monday was August 29th, and so on and so forth. So they click this, and for this particular week, they can see that they kind of left out. There's only two videos. So you'll click the link to the video. It'll take you to uh, YouTube. Now, this is about a 40-minute video, so it's one of the, uh, one of the, I'd say it's about average. I'd say it's about what most of them are. Uh, now, I'm putting, whoa. Well, that was scary. Uh, so uh, what I'll do is I actually teach this class. Let's go on through, and I'll show you some things. Um, I want to show you the calculator. Uh, I, I'm working at home today. My my computer, my computer's not slow. Okay, there we go. Um, okay, there we go. Um, so you'll see that I use the. The Texas Instrument Calculator. So, so the, you know, if you have an ounce of um, math anxiety, it's really cool for you to have the same calculator as me. So when I push, you know, a button, you push the same button, and and, and things uh, work nicely. Okay. So, guys, uh, you know, if there's any resources, they will be posted in the week number one. Uh, and just to give you an idea how this all plays out, uh, week number fourteen. Uh, the Monday, there was only one video, but uh, I think this video is probably going to be about an hour. No, it's only 12 minutes, so, um, uh, wow, that, that was, uh, oh, I see what it was. This was the week of Thanksgiving, so I took it uh, really easy because uh, of that. But, but anyway, uh, typically speaking, you're going to have about two to three hours of videos uh, that you're going to watch each week. Uh, it kind of what motivated me to start teaching this class online is because I think there's an advantage to having these videos at your disposal. Guys, you can watch, okay, so for example, here's a week that it gets kind of carried away. Um, th these videos that I post are exactly the same thing I would do if I was teaching face-to-face. -face. But sometimes in class, you know, you get distracted or I go too fast or whatever it may be. The calculator's confusing. Well, guys, you always got these videos. You can watch them anytime. You can replay, rewind. You can pause. You can, you know, go get a iced tea or a beer or whatever you want to do and, and, and let me teach you some, uh, in this case, systems and matrices. Now, uh, one thing that you'll want to take a look at is this getting started folder. Um, there's going to be some things here. Uh, first of all, in your Blackboard, you'll see that I have, uh, now notice that's the wrong course ID, but it'll be correct on yours. There's an introductory video that I'm putting up right now. There will be a copy of the syllabus. And then there will be some other things, you know, how, a video on how to get a temporary code on my math lab and, and different things. So, uh, you know, those are, are there uh, for your disposal. Not disposal, for your benefit, for your use. All right, uh, class policies. Uh, pretty simple. We don't see each other much. Um, uh, cell phones are not permitted while you're uh, testing, so they must be turned off. If you miss an exam, documentation is required. I had an, another student uh, a couple, uh, about a year ago taking this class, and uh, she just should not have been in an online class. She, had just, she just did not have the time management or the self-discipline, and, and, and she admitted this after she failed. Um, and uh, she just didn't show up for the exam because she didn't know it was that the exam, she didn't, first of all, she didn't watch the introductory video. She didn't watch any of the videos. Um, uh, you know, she didn't even know I had an exam. And about three weeks later, she realized she had missed an exam. She thought, oh, yeah, I've got that online class. Maybe I should do something. Um, yeah, I, I don't react well in those situations. Uh, I'm telling you, you need to stay in contact daily. There's a lot of videos to watch. There are assignments that have to be posted. Uh, that you have to submit, and so, uh, guys, if you're one of those people who like to go and hide, this is not going to work for you. It's just not. And don't, and trust me, I've got a waiting list. Uh, if you want to drop, we've got people that want your seat. So, uh, 
something you got to figure out. Uh, calculating your final grade, uh, midterm exam 40%, final exam 40%, and your online assignments are 20. Guys, here in just a second, I'll show you. I'll tell you what, let me just go ahead and do that now. Let me show you how you're going to uh, get your assignments. So you're going to go to My Math Lab, and you're going to sign in. Now, this is going to be after you create your account, obviously, and uh, I have a video posted on that. And uh, you're not going to see this stuff. Um, let's see. So we are right here. Now, let me show you. Um, let me show you the way this was. Math 1170, fall 2016. Because the, the, it's, it's, it's already built. So they would uh, log on to their site. There's really only two places you're probably going to go, and that's the homework option um, uh, and the, uh, the grade book. Now, I'll tell you guys, the grade book on my math lab is frustrating. It has all these wacky rules for setting up the weights. So what I have to do about seven or eight times a semester is I have to go in and reset the weights on the grade book. Now, a lot of times, you know, uh, the, again, I don't know why my math lab resets it the way they do, but sometimes they'll have an exam waiting less than a quiz, which is just completely ridiculous. And until I recognize that and go in and, 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 um, and, and reset it, your exam may be higher than you really are, uh, higher than what you're really, the, the performance that you're doing in the class. So, uh, you know, I'll get these emails like, Dr. Darbro, last night my average was 84 and this morning 69. How can I, my average drop when I didn't even do anything? Well, your average wasn't what, 84. It was a 69, but my math lab had recalculated or recalculated things incorrectly, giving you a higher grade than you deserved. And that's frustrating. I'll tell you it is. It's frustrating. Uh, but, uh, and I try to stay on top of that, but my goodness, they go in and do things um, uh, really in wacky, wacky ways. Now, one thing I promise you is in the very end, what I'll do is I'll export all of your scores to Excel, and then I do the calculations myself. And um, usually the final grade after I set the weights on my math lab are pretty close. But anyway, you're going to access your assignment by going to homework. <clears throat> and uh, week number one, uh, you'll click this. Now, again, this is for last semester, so... Uh, you know, these dates don't apply, but you'll just click this, and it's probably going to say it's the due date has passed, so you can't, uh, but you can't review in practice, but uh, it won't change your score. So, guys, that's the way you do the um, assignments. Um, so, the online assignments are 20%. Now, a nice little caveat, uh, <clears throat> if your final exam score is higher than your midterm, then I will replace your midterm with your final exam score. And guys, I tell you, uh, over the past four or five years I've been teaching this online, very, very, very few students score higher on the final than the midterm. So don't use that to kind of slack around on the midterm. Go ahead and get a, a good score on the midterm because it's going to be a lot easier than the final. Um, so... Um, uh, anyway, I have no idea uh, what all that was. Uh, all right. Um, please don't depend on this probably for very few student scores. Uh, okay. Um, guys, a typical week. Um, okay, let me go back to this. Now, guys, this doesn't work in reverse. Let's say you score... Uh, you know, uh, an 80 on the midterm and a 20 on the final, it doesn't replace that way. But if you score an 80 on the final and a 20 on the midterm, the final has to be higher than the midterm. It doesn't work if the midterm is higher than the final. Uh, <clears throat> so I had a student one time say, well, that's not fair. I, I, don't, I don't care if it's fair. Uh, I think it is fair. My feeling is if you don't get it at midterm, but you end up getting it in the end, then I'm going to give you credit for that. But if you get some stuff at midterm and at the end you know nothing, I don't think that's the same thing. So, and if that's something that doesn't uh, suit you, then uh, you uh, you know just need to look at uh, taking the class from someone else. Um, 
All right, a typical week. Uh, typical week, you're going to have two to three hours of lectures, videos that are posted by Mondays at noon. Uh, I tell you right now, you're not going to be successful in this class if you don't watch the videos. Uh, have students try it all the time. They just log on and try to do the assignments and get somebody to help them with the assignments, and then they come to take the exam, and they realize that the exam covers some of the stuff on my math lab, but there's other stuff too. And they don't do well, and they flunk uh, because they're trying to take shortcuts. If you're somebody like, that likes to take shortcuts, guys, don't take this class online. Uh, I will embed sneaky quizzes in the videos. For example, something like this. Uh, I will do something, let's see, uh, let me see if I can come up with something that, um, that, uh, that works here. I will play a song, maybe I do something like this. Sunday. All right, so I don't know if you know the name of that song or not, but I will tell you, and, and again, it'll just be kind of random. It's like sneaky, like it just, it, you know, 24 minutes into the, into the uh, uh, video, I'll say something like, hey, I'll tell you what, send me an email by the time your assignment is due and tell me something interesting about yourself. I'll give you 20 points. If you don't do it, you get zero out of 20. If you do, you get 20 out of 20. Or I'll start busting out in some music and say, hey, send me the name of that song by the time the assignment is due, and I'll give you 20 out of 20. Uh, these, are, these sneaky quizzes cannot be made up. If you say, well, I didn't hear it, you know, well, it tells me you didn't watch the video completely. Uh, I promise you they're there. So um, also, sometimes uh, in the past, I've, these sneaky quizzes, I've said that, uh, that I'll only accept like the first five. That's not true. I will accept it up until the assignment for that particular video is due. So, let me explain that. Um, the assignment on the material that's taught in the videos is due the following Tuesday. Assignments are due on Tuesdays at 11 p.m. Now, what I did is I, I put a calendar here. So, for example, let's think about this January the 9th. That's when classes begin. On January the 9th, all of the videos for that week's content will be posted. You'll have, it'll be posted by noon. So you'll have the rest of the day on the 9th, the 10th, the 11th, the 12th, the 13th, the 14th, the 15th, the 16th, and all day on the 17th before the assignment is due on this content. So on Tuesdays at 11 p.m., eight days later, your assignment is due. So I post this video and embed a sneaky quiz. And there's going to be five of them throughout the semester. Uh, and I tell you, I'm only accepting the first five. That's not true. I'm going to accept them all. As long as you send me the email telling me whatever I ask you to do, tell me something interesting, tell me the name of the song, by 11 o'clock on the following Tuesday, then you get credit for that quiz. If you send it on the 18th, you don't get credit. You get a zero. 19th, you don't get credit. You, 31st, you look on my math lab and you see, uh, let me show you how it'll, you know, how it'll actually play out. You go to your grade book. Well, it's not going to show. Let me go um, to assignment manager, give you an idea what, what, what happens here. And you look at this one, you look at like... Uh, this quiz number two annoying song, you're like, what? I don't remember a quiz number two. How did I miss that? Well, you didn't watch the video. Because somewhere in one of the videos, I've embedded a sneaky, uh, and I know what I do there. I, I play this song that really just annoys the crap out of me. And I tell you, if you tell get back to me by the time the assignment's due, uh, and tell me your most annoying song, uh, then I give 20 out of 20. So, uh, guys, it's my way of doing attendance quizzes, uh, what I, which I do when uh, I do face-to-face. -face. All right, guys, we're off uh, a little bit here, um, so we know how to do. We're in a typical week. So, um, so let's go on back to the calendar. So uh, on the 17th, your assignment will be due from 
the content videos that are posted on the 9th. On the 16th, there will be another group of videos, which is actually a day before the assignment is due from the 19th, but the, the videos from the 16th. And you, you turn these things in anytime early. Uh, just if you turn them in late, you get penalized. So then I'll post videos on the 16th by noon. That video or that assignment isn't due until the 24th at 11 p.m. All right, so I don't think we need the calendar anymore. And that's kind of slowing down. All right, things, so I'm going to get rid of that. All right, so guys, this right here tells you my math lab assignments and due dates. So assignment number one, which is due, which will be posted uh, uh, January the 9th. Uh, and it is due Tuesday, January the 17th at 11 p.m. Next week, January the uh, 16th. That assignment is due on January the 24th at 11 p.m. All assignments are due on Tuesday except for the midterm study guide. And I give you until Wednesday, March 1st at 7 p.m. because that's the time that the exam shuts down. Uh, so, a couple of notes. A 50% penalty will be assessed for work that is submitted after the due date and time. The penalty applies only to the questions that are submitted late. Here's an example. You start on your assignment before the due date, before the due is due, and you get 7 out of 10 questions correct. So your assignment is 70 at that point in time. Your buddy sticks his head in, in, your, you know, in the house, your apartment, your dorm, and says, hey, we're going to B-dubs. Why don't you join us? And you're sitting there, you know, do I want to go, do I not want to go? It's just too much. You just can't. Turn it down. So you decide to go on out with your buddies, and uh, you don't get the other three questions submitted on time. You come back later that night, even Monday, whatever, you know, as long as it's up until the midterm or the final, depending on when the assignment was posted. Assignments that are posted before the midterm will not be accepted after the midterm. Assignments that are posted after the midterm will not be accepted after the final exam. So somewhere in there, you decide to submit the other three questions. You get them all correct. So on that part, you earn the extra 30%, but because they were late, there's a 50% penalty. So you get a 70% for the ones you turned in on time. You get half credit for the ones you turned in late, so your total score will be 85%. Even though you got 100% on everything, you get penalized because you didn't get it in on time. Uh, Important note number two, if uh, no questions are submitted late and you submit all sneaky quizzes, then I'll add 5% to your online assignment average. Now, guys, that makes, uh, can make quite a bit of difference in the grade calculation. So, gang, uh, tentative schedule here. Check it out. Uh, I don't expect you to memorize that or anything, but throughout the semester, if you're like, hey, it's February 6th. I wonder what Darbro's going to do to us this week. Uh, well, I'm going to teach you matrices and systems of linear equations. This part right here, you're going to love this month right here, the mathematics of finance. It's going to be stuff that uh, is definitely applicable to your life. Well, let me show you a picture of me. So if you would happen, hopefully I don't get anything embarrassing here. Uh, let's show you a picture of me just in case you would happen to run into me um, on campus. Uh, please say hello. Let's see if I can find something. Well, there's me being pretty goofy. Um, let's see. Find. You ever notice some pictures just don't look like you? Uh, but some do. Um, let me get one that looks like me. And one that won't be embarrassing. Um, okay, well, there's, there's me and my, my daughter. I usually don't wear my hat around backwards when I'm on campus, but I do love to wear a hat. There's me with my other daughter. My daughters are adopted from China. Uh, they're awesome. They're, they're absolutely very special. And there's me with both of them. All right, so if you see the big ugly guy in the middle uh, wandering around campus, uh, say hi. Say, hey, Dr. Darbro or Doug or whatever. I'm in your online class, and I'm doing great, at least what I hope to hear. All right, guys, uh, enough of this. Uh, what I want you to do 
is I want you to send an email. This is your first quiz. Uh, I don't know why I'm sitting here reading Facebook. When, uh, and, and another thing, add me on Facebook if you want. Uh, if you think it's kind of weird to be Facebook friends with your professor, then, then don't add me. Or maybe you don't even have Facebook. But if you do, um, uh, add me. It's uh, uh, kind of a way to get to, get to know your professor a little bit. Um, so, first quiz. Uh, send me an email and say, Dr. Darbro or Doug, whatever. I watched the first video, the introductory video. I understand all the policies, and I'm looking forward to the class. Tell me that even if you're not. Uh, and uh, this will be your first uh, 20 out of 20 quiz. Now, when is this due? Well, it is due by 11 p.m. No, 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 I'm sorry. It'll be due here. It'll be due uh, Tuesday, January 17th by 11 p.m. You don't submit this through my math lab. You submit it by sending me an email. Guys, looking forward to it. If you have any questions, come see me. Um, uh, more videos coming up about some of the caveats. You know, how do you get your my math lab set up? Uh, how do you get a temporary code? Um, how do you access your, your assignments and stuff? Even though I showed you in this video, I'm going to put up a, uh, a video that goes maybe at a slower pace. Uh, so if you need to watch that, uh, watch it. So, guys, I'm done. Take care.